it is almost impossible to think of people who will not like this film. I think most people will either like this film or love this film. It was Elba's best actor performance is Strinder Bell, by far. This is his second best performance. This is a good film. This, like, let's start here. So before we even go into details, this is a good film that people will enjoy. I will, I, because, because you know what, I have to sleep on it. Let, I'll, I'll, let's be real. I did another review. So I went to, you know, London Film Festival. I watched the show and I did a review as soon as I came back. And it was long-winded. I was talking here and so forth because I still wanted to, to digest. I slept on it. Let the movie come into me and so forth. Um, let scenes marinate. And I come back and I say, no, 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 no. I have to do an, an, another review. The best place to start is this is a good film. And I'm surprised by how good it was. The film is not perfect. There are things that it could have done to be better. But those things they could have done to be better would have taken it from a real good film to an amazing film, like an incredible film, like a tier one chief or kind of film. So, but what we have, because I think when I did my first review, I was like, okay, well, if they could have done this, if this would have done this, done, I was like, let's just start with what you have. Because if you have a brick film, then it's like, okay, it's useless. But we don't have that. What we have is not, it's a pretty good film. And as I slept on it, I just thought to my mind that, this is a first-time director. This is a first-time director. Frank Miller, amazing comic book artist, directed his first film, The, the Spirits. It was nasty. It was, it was visually cool. <laughs> that was nasty. And that's why it's a first-time director. Ugh, dodgy man. But for Jim Samuel, who directed a short before, but this is his first feature-length film. When you watch this, because as I was watching, I was, I was, I was about to say, okay, when did this film veer off? When did this lose its way? And I was like, we're still going, we're st like, oh, whoa, whoa. this film hasn't lost its weight, it's still pretty good. Because you know, you always wait, wait until, okay, what's, what is the point of the film that's, oh, okay, it's, it loses its way, okay, it gets cheesy, because I just, I was waiting for, ah, uh, this is the cheesy bit, this is not so good bit, oh, this bit doesn't work. I'm like, no, this, there is, there is no glaringly bad thing about this film. There is nothing that really derails the film. There's no character that derails the film. There's no parts of the film that doesn't work. It works really well, and in terms of a Western, how it's directed, the story, the characters, the characters, this is a good film. Like, this is a good film. Like, for me, when people see this on Netflix, I mean, it comes out on cinema, I think, October 21st, 22nd, and it's on Netflix November 3rd, you, you, will, you, you will like this film. It is almost impossible to think of people who will not like this film. I think most people will either like this film or love this film. That's what I believe. Some people may hate it, but it's like, unless, let me see, unless you're racist, let me see, unless you're racist or you have some kind of weird thing, I don't know how you cannot like this film. Like, you can just say, oh, this is, I like it, but it's not so good. But at the base level, you've got to just say, no, this is a good film. Like, this is a good film. Like, if you are hating it, then you've got to have an issue. Maybe a issue. Um, but look, man, because um, again, this is a non spoiler review. I don't want to give too much away, man. But I think all the. So basically, Jonathan Majors, who plays the main lead character, obviously, you know, he's certain in the trailer, like, you know, something happens to him as a young kid and he wants to seek revenge on the person that did that to him and so forth, which obviously we assume is Idris, Idris Elba. You see that in the trailer. And I think Jonathan Majors, he's a very. Because I think he's, he comes from the theatre. He is a very good actor. And when you just see him, because again, like, he really gets into the character's speech. Obviously, the way people spoke back in those times, the character's speech. And you can just see that he's dealing with a lot of this kind of trauma within him. And there's a lot of inner conflict that he, he goes with. But when he goes into the real emotional scenes, this guy can really dig in deep to those e emotions, man, very, very well. Because I first saw him in The Five Bloods. Um, Spike Lee's film, I was like, oh, this guy's impressive. But I think he really takes his acting game to the next level in this man. Um, obviously, you have Delroy Lindo, who plays the sheriff. Really good. Really, really, really. I mean, like, 
He's one of my, my favorite actors, actors of all time. And I thought he could have been the villain. And I, I thought, mm, should he be the villain? Although, I think it was very good. And I think he does. Look, Dolindo is always good in all his films. The guy's always good in all his films. And I think, again, like this, he walking off of Jonathan Majors, and they're both in the, the, the Five Bloods. He, again, he just, he plays that role really well. And again, I don't want to give too much away, but it's, he's also dealing with another, a conflict as well as a lawman and what a lawman should do. So, there's that there. Um, Regina King. <laughs> oh man basically if anybody watches the boondocks she i just think she regina king is incredibly talented because the first time we saw her in friday with um ice cube and um uh, i'm chris talk talk talker so that's i think that's her first film was she in i don't think she was in boys in the hood but she was in on, in friday so this woman can direct she can act and she's an excellent voice actor, as we saw in Boondocks, her doing the voices of the two characters, man. And I think in this story, see, she, so Richard King, like, she's got very striking eyes. And look, Richard <laughs> King, black don't crack. Like, like let's, let's just be black. I'm like, hey, how old is this woman? And she looks like she's, she could pass for 25 or 20. Like, I'm just like, her skin is perfection and everything. So when you just look at her, you just think, oh, she's so nice. And how could you look at her as a villain? But again, she, and like everyone, she nails the accents supremely well. And there's just something very cold about her. Because she is, she's, she, she's that chick. Basically, she's that chick. And because she is, she is not a nice person. And, you, and there's just something, even when, you know, she just holds a scene and, look, and looks at someone, even the whole train sequence and how she regulates that train sequence, you could just tell, oh, no, 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 no. She's really, she's got that kind of, she, yeah, she's, got that, she's got a very quiet, solemn menace about her. So she's just like, oh, I'm crazy, I'm not crazy. She's like, no, I'm crazy, but I'm crazy in that kind of, you know, let's relax and just say what's up. Let's just relax and just say what's up, you know. So I'm just amazed by just how talented she is. And also in this she, she she's definitely one of the most interesting characters and i think especially how she walks off of it is elba's character man um just though their whole crew is cool like in stanfield man who plays cherokee bill man um i don't want to spoil this for you this once black twitter gets to this guy or once, once twitter on social media like sees the, the film people are going to talk about this guy on social media for sure i don't want to give anything away but i promise you i promise you people will talk about cherokee bill um um after this is from for sure 100 freaking percent man um but i've got to talk about um actually no before i get to idris before i get to idris let me just um uh, hold up um before i get to idris have a forecast um so yeah, Zazie beats as Mary Fields. She, she's she's always good. She's always good. Like I think I've seen her because she was in the Atlanta series. She was in the Joker film. She's always good. Again, she does her role really well. She, she's she's always a very consistent actor, man. Um, I think R. J. Um, Sila or R. R. J. Kyler plays Jim Beckworth, man. He's another really good character. See, I really liked his character because he's a very quick gunslinger, and he's so desperate to prove that he's the fastest. You're gonna love his character. You're gonna love his character. So I think he's really good. And again, he's part of the good crew. Yes, Danielle Deadweiler, who plays Coffee. People will feel a way about Cherokee Bill played by Lucky Stanfield. You're gonna feel a way about her character. She, I think, is gonna be the most beloved character in this film. I think most people will love her character. I think she it's not actually like sort of steals the show and everything, but when you look at just the stuff that she does, how she's represented, you're gonna love her character. And there is a sequence in the film where it's, she, she is the star of that sequence. She is just the star of the sequence. And even the people in the cinema that are watching will be like, oh, no, no, no. So she's, no, 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 she, you're gonna love her. You're, you're gonna love her for sure. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so glad to Dion Cole, who plays Wiley Esco very interesting character because he's like a sheriff of i think it's i think it's it's redwood which is like an all-black town um just basically just his voice because he's got a very, a very like gravelly kind of voice 
he's another really interesting character. I don't want to give too much away, but when you just see his character, how he interacts with the crews and so forth, he, you, basically, there's so many good characters. There's so many good characters, but I know he's got the whole gold teeth. Um, yes, Idris Elba. This is probably one of Idris Elba's best acting performances. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this. Idris Elba's best acting performance is Strinder Bell, by far. This is his second best performance. Which is huge, because he's made a lot of films. But I've watched pretty much most of Idris Elba's films, you know, ever since I saw him in The Wire. This is his second best performance. And when people see this, they'll be like, oh my god, that's why he's such a big deal. Because, you know, he sort of had a few missteps, a few things here and there. And I think people have felt like me that he didn't really take off the way he should have after Stringer Bell. Of course, he's done amazing films and he's, he's been a huge star. But I felt that he could have been so much more after what he did with Stringer Bell, which I just think was an outstanding performance and an outstanding character. But when you see him in this film, and you see how he commands the screen. I've never, I've not seen an actor command the screen or have such stage presence since Jack Nicholson. So because Jack Nicholson isn't working anymore, he's retired, there is nobody with greater stage presence in today's acting world than Idris Elba. No one. Like, he is perfect. Because I thought Del Lindo should play the villain. I thought, oh, no, no, he'll be as the villain. When you just see how well Idris Elba plays the villain, you're like, James James Samuel, you're that dude. James Samuel, you're that dude, man. Like like um you know, you're that you're that you're you're that you're that freaking dude, man. You're that you're you're that freaking dude. So um right. see so, yeah, but I've got to speak about the director, man. James Samuel, man. You see, see look, I say the film's not perfect. Like the my only these are my only nitpicks. Use of music. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's misplaced. I didn't like the intro song. Ah, it just felt out of place. And the times when music was done, especially in... There's a particular scene when he chooses a piece of music that... No, no. If I was like an editor or an advisor, I'd say, no, 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 no. That music ruins what the scene was about. You needed to either be silent or use a different piece of orchestral music. And my other nitpick is... Idris Elba was amazing as a villain. Actually, okay, but I felt that he could have done more. I felt that they could have really expanded upon his character a lot more because what we have is freaking amazing. I wanted more. I needed more. But when you watch the, the film, you could decide that maybe it was just the right amount. Maybe it was just the right amount of villainy that you needed. Um, and I thought that there could have been 20 minutes more. They could, I mean, I'm not sure how long the the film is, um, but I felt that there could have been maybe like 20 minutes more just because I felt that there could have been a little bit much more of a section before. I think we got to the finale too quick. I felt that we we could have had another section that led up to the f to the finale. So really, those are really my only kind of nitpicks and drawbacks from this being like a masterpiece and, and, and so forth. But James Samuelman, for a debut film, that is effing amazing. Effing amazing because this guy directed it. Just because for me, I just, because when I watch films, I just, I just look very, very carefully. And I would just keep in mind that, oh, it's a first end director. So when I, if it's a first end director, you want to just say, well, you know, he will learn, he will learn, he will learn. And the shocking thing was because Westerns. The, they require style. Like, this isn't like a, a drama. See, if, let's say, a guy, okay, so that I'm a first time director, and you were recommending a genre to do, I would say either do comedy or do drama. Don't do sci fi. No, don't do sci fi. Don't do action. Don't do a western. Because for westerns, you have to understand scenery, you've got to understand action. And this is an action western. You have, and action is very complicated. Because you need to understand the blocking, pacing, um, movements. There's a scene 
between, and there's a fight scene between Regina King and Zazie Beats. It's a pretty long fight scene. And remember, you're not dealing with like amazing martial arts and so forth. So they obviously had to have like um, stunt doubles. And I was like, the way this fight scene is done, how brutal it is, how well it's filmed, I was like, wow. And even when you just look at the finale and just how the action is done, basically, as I was watching it, I was thinking of Red Dead Redemption. I think, oh my gosh, this is, feels like playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and, and 1 again. But, I mean, um, this, I mean, it's a good, like, this is a good film. The, people, when pe when you watch this, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to like, because in my mind, I'm just thinking about, okay, why would you not like this film? Now, you may not love it, but I cannot understand anybody who watched this film and isn't entertained or doesn't somehow enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. Like, it's a, it's, it's a, at the base level, at the lowest level, it's a good film. Because they say, oh, well, the ending could have been here, it could have had a bit more and everything, but at the base level, it's a good film. It's a good film with very good performances. Like for me, this is Idris Elba's second best performance. Jonathan Majors leads this very well. You will love Regina King's character. You will love her character in this. And you will also love um, um, the character who plays... Oh, God, I was this. Um, Daniel Deadweiler, who plays Coffee. Oh, you will love her character. You will love her character. You will love her character, man. Because obviously, they, they spoke to so James Samuel, because obviously this was the London Film Festival, so they did an interview with James Samuel before, and he said that, oh, no, no, like, um, they wanted to show representation of, like, you know, people of color, and also women as, as well, you know, so that really popped off. And I think the thing they were saying as well was, because the lady who was interviewing the guys for the London Film Festival kept saying, oh, black western, how does it feel to be in a black western? And for me, don't stop saying black western and stop doing all this because it's you saying that you saying this is a black western takes away from what james Samuel has done this is a very good western and this for me has reignited the genre in, in a different sense perfect example creed creed pretty much reignited the rocky genre by taking it in a whole different direction with Michael B. Jordan and so forth and everything. I think what James Samuel has done has reignited and set a flame on the Western genre. And now, for me, when this film comes out, Netflix, you've got a series on your hands. This is a series. Because the way it ends, there's obviously room for sequels. This is a series. And I just feel that Netflix you could have, like, a really... I mean, especially if you just keep hold of James Samuel. Because, again, look, this guy, he wrote it, he directed it, and he did the music because the guy is a musician. He He's known as a musician called The Bullets from England. So, as long as you just keep this dude and just say, bro, write the scene. You've got a very interesting thing on your hand. And for me, I'm a Western fan. Like... See, Unforgiven is the best Western of all time in terms of how well it's directed. So this will never come close to Unforgiven. My favorite Western is it for a few dollars more. And look, it can never beat that because that is my favorite Western. And with one of my favorite performances, Jean Maria Volonte as India. But this ain't that far off. So look, man, if I was grading this man, I would give this tier two. Tier two. I'll give this a tier two. You know, I think based on the quality of the direction, the story, you will, the end, it's a very good ending. See, the way that a story is only as good as its ending. This is a really, really, when you see the ending, you're going to be like, oh, wow, damn. And even when you just see the ending, you feel conflicted because like, well, but, but he did. Okay, but then, basically, people will have discussions about the ending and what happened in the ending and what the character did in that ending. So, but why it doesn't get to the upper tier to tier one status is, you know, like, and it's fine because it's a first and director. Like, it doesn't really have that super special piece of class that's, let's say, a few dollars more or an unforgiven has. But maybe you can see it in a, in a sequel. Because Fistful of Dollars was I, then a few dollars more said, what's up? Clint Eastwood had such a wealth 
of experience before he began to do Unforgiven. And as I said, Unforgiven were was all the experience he had from making Westerns and walking alongside Sergio Le Leone and so forth and being in Westerns himself. So for a first time debut film, James Samuel, you've put forth a damn good movie. And I wanna see now I wanna watch it again. I wanna watch the, the film again. I wanna watch the film again, you know? Um Yeah. When this releases in cinemas October 21st, and obviously on Netflix November 3rd, I you will you a lot of people will love this film. People like it, maybe people are indifferent. Most people, you will love this film. For sure, for sure. Mostly, there's critics and there's the streets and, and, and people. The critics, eh, I think critics will like the film and people will be like, eh, well, it's... But the streets, people, as a whole, you will love this film, for sure. Like the vid, subscribe, we love.